Hi, this is Harold Long. Welcome to the Hill Tran United Weekly Message and Podcast. I'm glad you're making time for this week's teaching. I will have more to say at the end, but for now, let's dive right in. Therefore, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort be found by him in peace, pure and faultless. Consider the patience of our Lord to be salvation, just as our dear friend and brother Paul wrote you to according to the wisdom given to him. Speaking of these things in all his letters, some of his remarks are hard to understand, and people who are ignorant and those whose faith is weak twist them to their own destruction, just as they do to the other scriptures. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been warned in advance, be on guard so that you aren't let off course into the error of sinful people, and lose your own safe position. Instead, grow in grace and knowledge the Lord Savior, Jesus Christ. To him belongs glory now and forever. Amen. May God bless you, your hearing and understanding and application of the scripture. This new year, we cry out to you, the one who restores broken hearts, who refreshes tired spirits, who makes all things new. Let our faith and hope be born again today. Help us to let go of the past, to stop looking back and turn our eyes toward you. We are here today in full acceptance of who we've been, but also in hopeful expectation of who you're shaping us to be. Let your love work in us so you can better work through us. We stand ready ready to embrace all you have for our lives, ready to do your will, ready to witness the wonders of your mighty hand, ready to share the redeeming love, the perfect grace, the life-changing salvation you have given us. So today, we lift up our voices in praise to the one who washes away our failures, who wipes away our fear and doubt, to the almighty God, who makes all things new. Well, good morning again. My name is Pastor Harold Long. It's great to be with you this morning. And a happy new year to everybody. And those listening online, those watching online or listening on demand, we're uh, glad you're with us. Got a little feedback there, Chris. Um, our scripture reading today is, is uh, reminds us that there's always room to grow. And that's the title of today's message, How to Grow Spiritually in 2023. There's always room for more in our life. And so that's the challenge every year. And I think these transition times that we have at the end of the year to be able to stop and look at our year and to ask ourselves, where did we come from? How did it go in 2022? What went right? What went wrong? What could I have done better? What are the blessings? And do I stop long enough to count those? Because it's so easy to look back and, go, and just look at everything negative. I didn't do this. I didn't lose the weight I wanted to lose. I didn't, I didn't do this. I didn't, you know, I just whatever. I didn't get this project done. I didn't get that project done. And it's so easy to not to stop and count the blessings of what's going on in our life. And, and so if you're struggling with anxiety or depression or despair or any of that stuff as we go into this New Year's, I can promise you if you just shift the focus off the problem and move it over to the solution, it'll make a big difference. And just how you start the year, just counting the blessings. And we all have many. And the cycles of life come through and the seasons of life and and are challenging sometimes. We've lost people we love this past year. I've lost two of my best friends this past year. Uh, It was a tough year for a lot of people. People have gotten ill that we love. People are sitting here right now that are struggling with illness. But they're here and they're persevering and they're moving forward because that's what life challenges us to do. And so in 2023, it's how do we keep that going? Um... New Year's was a, it was a fun night last night, and uh, I don't know how many made it up to midnight. It sounds like most of you are in bed by 9 o'clock. I don't know if anybody still goes out and beats pot and pans or 
shoot shotguns or do fireworks or any of those things like we used to do when we were littler. Um, I don't know if you heard any of that stuff last night. I didn't. Uh, I was out long before midnight uh, and slept pretty good, actually. And many of you just don't care. It's just another day in the year. And you can take a very pessimistic or optimistic view of where you're at in life. I mean, if you're a pessimist, 2002, 22, you stayed up just to make sure it ended. You know, you didn't want any more to do it, right? And if you're an optimist, you couldn't wait for the new year to come because you were excited about what it's going to bring, what this new year offers. Our scripture reading today is a challenging one in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. Um, it reminds us, you know, of what the challenge was 2,000 years ago. But people are already getting strayed. They're getting worried. You know, Jesus hasn't come back. It's 30 years into this now. Where's all this stuff that you promised? Where's, where's it all going? They were under tremendous oppression at the time for being a Christian. So they had all these things going on, and they're starting to scatter. Some are drifting away. Some are asking questions. Some are having doubts. Some are just left altogether. So Peter's writing this letter to remind them that the, the Jesus is who Jesus says he is. That's what Hebrews is all about. Second Peter really dives into that. But Jesus is the real McCoy, as we talked about over the, the holiday season. And we just got to stay the course. And right now, we just need to stay and continue to live the way Jesus asked us to live, which is a Jesus-centered way. Are we willing to do that? Because the world pulls at us to do different from that. You hear me quote this quote from Mother Teresa often, but it's just a powerful quote. Is that we have to remain green because green things are growing. And how do we remain green in 2023 when we live in this chaotic world? And I, and I, I sit and think about Peter and I, and I almost want to, I wish I could just call Peter and say, Peter, you think it was challenging 30 years into it. Try 2,000 years later. Because people are still straying. And, and statistically speaking, if it continues on the trend that it is, by 2070, half of the United States will fall into the category of the nuns. People that identify as agnostic or atheist or irreligious, period. I mean, that's half the people in the United States that are moving this direction. They're scattering because they're, you know, we live in this postmodern world. We live in a world full of relativism. My truth is my truth. Your truth is your truth. And that's how we live. And so how do you, as a Christian believer, how do you deal with that? And, it's, and if you took the message that Second Peter conveys to the audience of his day, is it even relevant today? Can you still reach the masses with that message? And it's a fair question. I'll let you wrestle with that question. Is the old, hey, if you don't turn and repent, you know, you're going to spend your life separated from God. You're, 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 you're going to spend your life, even if you want to go to the extremes, you're going to, go, you're going to spend your life in hell. That hellfire brimstone message that was really prevalent back in the days, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, even the 80s. Is that still an effective message in today's postmodern world? Can you move people with that message? Be honest with yourself. Can you? And if you can't, or you, you're hesitant to, or you're afraid to, to go down that road, then what is your message? What is the message in 2023 to live a spirit-centered life, to live, a, more importantly, a Jesus-centered life? What does that look like? And these are all things that every one of us here have to wrestle with in this postmodern world that we live in. And uh, whether you like it or you don't like it, Peter is worried about their salvation. He's worried about their internal destiny. And he reminded them where their focus should lie and what it means to live a Jesus-centered life, what it means to live for God's glory instead of your own ambitions and your own dreams and everything else, but to stay the course. He lays it out there. And so those are the questions that we have to ask ourselves. Is that affected today is it still relevant today and i know peter has their best interest at heart we know that but again how effective is it in the 21st century it's a fair question to ask one i can promise you most preachers aren't going to ask it but i'll ask it all day long what are we going to do with that how are you going to wrestle with that and i'll leave that up to you in your individual studies and in your small group studies and in your family studies to wrestle with that question what does it mean to live a jesus-centered life in 2023 what does it mean to carry the good news? What does it mean to be an effective disciple of Jesus Christ in 2023? I mean, effective. What does that look like? The world of social media and TikTok and Snapchat and all the other venues out there that get people's attention, especially the younger generation. How do you live into that and reach the masses? And that's a challenge all of us have to do, wrestle with. Our message today is how to grow spiritually in 2023. 
And the first step in growing anything is you're going to have to stop and take inventory of where you're coming from. Where have I come from? Where am I at? Where are you at on your spiritual journey in 2023? I mean, where, I mean really, where are you at today as we sit here? And, and that's what we have to take a look at. You need to look at the blessings in your life and the virtues in your life and the gifts and the talents and everything else you have going on. But you also got to take ownership for your hurts and your habits and your hangups and your and, and the character defects or your shortcomings or the sin in your life, whatever works for you language wise. If you don't think you have any of those things, if you don't think you don't know what your character defects are, I should say, ask your family. They'll tell you in a heartbeat what your what your hang ups are, what your what your challenges are. And so we all have that, but you need to stop and look at that. And the problem in the culture we live in is that the personality of almost every human being in extreme levels is dominated by pride and fear. The pride says you don't have to look, you don't have to deal with it, and the fear says you dare not. And so it's real easy to start living by what I call the 80-20 rule, even in Christian circles, even in recovery circles, even in spirit-centered circles, where you just display about 80% about what's going on in your life. And the other 20%, you're not too proud of it, and you keep it in the dark. And it's kind of an unwritten rule in spiritual circles in the world itself. It's like, you tell me about your 80%, I'll tell you about my 80. Don't ask me about my 20, Gary, and I won't ask you about your 20. Agree? We don't have that in writing, but that's what happens. And then you sit and you get lost all the time in that. And that 20% that's in the dark, it's, you know, it has us enslaved. And it carries a tremendous amount of fear and baggage and shame and guilt and so forth. And we just don't want it out in the light for people to see. So we just live by this 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40 rule. And so how do you break that open? And that's, if you want to grow spiritually, it's how do we take this 20 and move it out of the light and, you know, the dark into the light and let the spirit of truth and the spirit of, of, you know, the light of truth shine on it. And so that's really the challenge. If we're going to grow spiritually, it's going to be more about subtraction than it is addition. And I I hope you really hear that. It's going to be more about subtraction than it is addition. It's really easy to want to add more. I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do more. No, really, you need to stop and subtract some things out of your life. And it's the stuff that's blocking your channel, the stuff that's really blocking you off spiritually. And I'm not talking about physically being present. I'm talking about spiritually being present in the circles that you're in, in your own intimacy with God. What's blocking you off from that? And that's that 20%. That's the junk. There's plenty of people sitting in churches right now that are just moments away from blowing up their marriages, moments away from blowing up their careers, their jobs, their families, just, I mean, seconds and inches from blowing it all up because of the secrets and the darkness they hang on to, trying to, you know, this double life. You present the world, the stage character you want the world to see, and then you got, you know, what's really going on. And you try to juggle that, and you try to wear that, and, and we're masters at it. How good are we at it? It's kind of like the old man who was fishing one day, and a little kid walks up to him and says, Hey, mister, have you caught any fish today? And the guy thinks for a minute, he says, Well, if I catch this one and one more, that'll give me two for the day. And the kid goes, Wow, that's awesome. Not realizing the guy just told him he hadn't caught anything. But he couldn't just say I didn't catch anything, because that's just the pride and the fear won't let you. So we want to look a little cleaner than we really are. That's a, that's a huge temptation on humanity, not just us. But if you wear under the umbrella of Jesus, if you're under the umbrella of spirituality, well, that gets magnified to the power of 10 because now there's an expectation that you're going to act a certain way, walk a certain way, talk a certain way, think a certain way. And we not, none of us are perfect at that. So all that stuff starts to filter its way into this little category, the 20%, and we get lost. And so... If wherever you're at on your spiritual journey, we know that's the truth. You know that's the truth. What are you going to do in 2023 to deal with that? And that's the challenge, and that's what we'll look at today. And then the first part of that is taking whatever's in that 20 and finding the willingness and the confidence to share that with another human being, whoever that might be, a trusted confidant, your best friend, a counselor, a therapist, a pastor, somebody in the clergy, somebody you just feel like you can just be real with. Here's what's going on in my life, the good, bad, and ugly. It's imperative for all of us to do that. It's all through Scripture, that practice. And so that's step number one. You know, when we go in Matthew's Gospel, the chapter 13, especially in the Gospel, it talks about the parable of the sower. 
And then God's seeds thrown on all kinds of different ground, all different types of soil. And some takes place, some take, doesn't take place because of the weeds, some takes place because of the rocks. Go on and on and on. There has to be good soil for things to grow. There has to be light, but there has to be good soil. And there, and there has to be fruitfulness. And, and so this is what these exercises we're talking about today help prepare the soil. My sponsor, Tom, for many years used to say this, when preparation meets opportunity and God does the introduction, great things can happen in your life if you're prepared for the opportunities to come. And so that's just what we can do big time. The Christian life is a relationship with God and understanding that it develops over time. Nobody's got it all figured out here. You know, we just go day to day, and some days are better than others. But to grow spiritually, that is to grow in a spiritual Jesus-centered way, the goal is to live more like Jesus, to, to emulate Jesus in our life in a deeper, more effective way. That's what it means to grow spiritually. You know, so, I, so that's the beauty of Christmas. That's the beauty of Emmanuel, God with us. He gave us an example how to live. Not just words in Scripture, but an example. And his main message was love each other. If you had to simplify it, that's it. Just love each other. But it's, that's impossible if you haven't done this work I'm talking about. Because you're too consumed with yourself and your own deal and your own self-interest to really love anybody else. It's just the truth. So you have to be divorced from that. You have to come to the end of yourself. And how do we do that? And so these are some of the steps we take. Number one is just take inventory of my life. And then share it with another human being. So what is spiritual growth? Spiritual growth is growing a faith to know more about God and become who he created you to be. And that's always the thing I think to get excited about in our Christian rock, regardless of how old you are physically, is that still the best version of you is still out there. You may not be able to physically go like you used to, but it doesn't do anything to your spirit. Your spirit's still alive. I went all the way to Quincy, Illinois last night. A group of us did, friends of mine. We took a lady up to give a message last night. Her name, we call her Miss J. Miss J is 90 years old. And she went up and blew the doors off of this place. It was absolutely awesome to be a part of that. And she may be 90, and she wrote this uh, poem, and, I, and I'll get the poem and share it with you, and I don't want to butcher it, but she wrote this poem, and she closed her message with this poem. And it basically the message was that I'm not done yet, you know. And she talks about all her physical ailments in this poetry, but she ends with, I'm still here until God's done with me. But her spirit was on fire. People were just blown away. Here's a 90-year-old woman who's just bringing the fire. And it was awesome to be a part of that last night. And just it's a lesson for me that you may slow down. You may not be able to go like you used to go. But that has nothing to do with your spirit. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about living a spirit-centered life, Jesus-centered life. Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, followers on earth, encourages us in our scripture today. Grow in the grace of of, in grace and in knowledge of the Lord. So those are the two things that came out of our scripture. How do we grow? We grow in grace and we grow in knowledge. And knowledge, and more importantly, application of that knowledge. And Paul, a leader in the early church who wrote much of the New Testament, two-thirds of it at least, describes the growth in another way, and I'll quote it. We have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his is God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing in him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, end quote. Colossians chapter one, verses nine through 10. So the type of person that God wants you to be is the one who's characterized by Jesus's qualities. You know, so you can easily look up the qualities of Jesus. We see him in Galatians chapter five, the fruits of the spirit, Talking about love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all attributes and characteristics that make up the integrity of who Jesus is. And trying to put my will in line with that is the only time I'm ever put my will in line in a proper God-centered way is when I'm doing that. And none of us do it perfectly. And we need help to do it, and we need each other to do it. We just can't do it on our own. There's no Lone Ranger Christians. So what does the Bible say about spiritual growth? Well, the Bible has a lot to say about it. And here, I want to give you some important verses, and I'm just going to fire through them. But one bullet point is God begins the work in believers and will continue it. So he begins this work, and we see that in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. There is hunger to know God. And in in this hunger to want to grow in the image of Christ, to know more about God, hopefully you have that. And if you don't have that, pray for the willingness to have that. 
Pray for that. Just to want to know God on a deeper level. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. God equips you through his word. So you've heard, put on the full armor of God. Be in God's word. God's word is the truth. It's the absolute truth. If you want the truth in your life, then you've got to be in the truth. And understand that the Bible is not a book you read. It's a book that reads you. That's why it's easy not to read. Because if you're living in that 20% that's dominating your life, you're definitely not going to pick up the Bible or any other spiritual literature. And if you're sitting here, if you're listening to this message online and you're not picking up the Word of God, you're not into the Word of God, then ask yourself why and be honest. And I can promise you the darkness is having the dominant effect on your life. And when you expose yourself to the light, you're like a cockroach. You run for the dark. So you're not going to open the Bible because it's going to expose the truth. But if you're really hungry for the truth, you can't wait to get into the Word of God. You grow by meditating on God's Word. And we see this in Psalm 1. We see it in Psalm 3. Meditate on the law. Meditate on God's Word and do it day and night. Meaning do it throughout the day. That it's not just a 10-minute episode in the morning or right before you go. But it's a practice throughout the day. And it's just being in the moment. You, you, there's a big movement in Christian circles, especially in our Catholic friends, this contemplative Thomas Burton, Richard Rohr movement of just singleness in our prayer and meditation, just to find one thing and focus on that instead of having all these different things going on at the same time. I think there's power in that. I think that's something to lean into. Um, a, a, a good mentor of mine many years ago, Bob, told me that when you meditate, because I used to just struggle with all the commotion because my head's just like a gerbil on a wheel, just never shuts up. 24-7, 365. You think it would get tired. It, nothing. It's in the best shape of its life, I can promise you. This gerbil that's between my ears. But I said, how do you just quiet that down? And he gave me some great advice. He says, when you get ready to meditate, just pretend you just dove into the river. You swim down to the bottom of the river. You grab a hold of the grass, and you just hang on. And you let the stream carry whatever it carries. And you just have the experience in the moment you're supposed to have. And it's blessed me big time. The Holy Spirit teaches you to have the characteristics of spiritual maturity. So we see many scriptures say, hey, you're no longer on a bottle. Get off the bottle. You know, time to fly the nest. Time to be basically saying you're responsible for your own spiritual welfare and journey. You know, you need to be the one that's your best coach and fan when it comes to your spiritual practices in your life. The characteristics of spiritual maturity make you productive and it makes you effective at serving God's kingdom. And that's what we want to do. We want to be as effective as we can. So that's a great question to ask myself. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8 tells us that. Growing in maturity and discernment is the natural and right path. Staying the same is not. we got to continue to grow. Only green things are growing. If you're not growing, guess what? You're going. You're going in the wrong direction. You want to be growing. And so being in God's word and participating in things, Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 really lays that out. God builds up his followers to worship him as a community. And it's real easy, especially in this post-COVID era when people got comfortable and casual about not going to church anymore. Seriously. Or even just staying at home in their pajamas and watching it online. And there's some that push back and say, well, we shouldn't even stream services. We should just force people to, to come. Well, there's people that are shut in that can't come and will never be able to come again that partake in our streaming services. So I would never want to push that. But if you're able, you should be here and praising God in your community. Why? Because online you can't create kinetic energy. That buzz you felt here when we were just doing welcoming your name, you can't create that online. You can have the most powerful preacher and praise band online, and it's great. But you're never going to be able to create the energy that you have here, ever. Never. So you need to be here. As a mentor told me one time, wherever you're at, just be there. And being in community with people is important. Jesus' followers in the community become more mature to look like Christ together. So we need each other to grow in understanding and effectiveness and to walk and live a Jesus-centered life. I need you as much as you need me. Your demonstration is powerful. One example is my friend Deb here, who's been really leading the charge on our online Zoom group called The Elephants, which everybody's invited to do. And she's been doing some great stuff that God has pushed her in this last two years to step out of her comfort zone. And she's a tremendous teacher and a communicator. And it's blessed all of us. So there's just one example of what I'm talking about. It's just one. I can give you dozens. You should follow the example of more mature believers. So you look around, and there's three types of people that come to church. 
let's be honest. There's those who make it happen, those who watch it happen, and those who don't know what's happening at all, right? And I've been all three of those cats. I didn't know what was going on when I started following Jesus. I didn't have any clue. I sure watched it happen for the first three years. But when I got into the make it happen crowd, the people that were going and living the way that I really wanted to live, even though I knew they weren't doing it perfectly, they were giving it their best shot, it changed my life. And I never looked back from that day to now. Great John Maxwell, great motivational guy, very kingdom-centered guy, says this, and I think it's important. He said, you should ask yourself three questions all the time. One, who am I around? Two, what's it doing to me? And three, is it okay? And if it's not okay, then you're the problem. You need to make some changes in your life. So how will we grow spiritually? I think there's three essential things. We grow through grace, through truth, and through time. Grace through truth and time. We're never going to be 100% spiritually mature. We're 100% right with God the day we exercise our faith and exercise repentance. But we're never going to be 100% right with God. But that's not an excuse to be casual, lazy, or act a fool. It's, we just keep growing and do the best we can. We're going to stub our toes. We're going to bump our heads. We're going to feel like we took two steps back, only to take three steps forward. It's just how we grow. But we do that together, and it's beautiful. And we experience Christ with others it has just the important benefits of that. It allows us to courage to support each other. So again, that's if you really were casual the last few years in your engagement, your commitment to being with your kingdom brothers and sisters, and not just here, but in the ministry and other things that we're doing, even just fellowshipping, just going out to eat, hanging out, playing some games, playing some cards, going on trips, going hunting, going fishing, whatever. If you haven't been active in that, I encourage you to up your game in 2023. How does spiritual growth happen? It happens through perseverance. It happens going through the trials and challenges of life. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 18 gives us that. He tells us to be living a spirit-filled life, always and forever. And the community, again, plays an important role in all of that. The word to life, the gift to prayer, all have life-changing impacts on our life. And it's vital for telling other people about it. When you're growing spiritually, it won't be a secret. Let me say that. When you're growing spiritually, it won't be a secret. People are going to notice it in your life. And they're going to go, man, I don't know what it is you got going on, but I want some of it. I want, I want, because I'm tired of living this life I want. And active spiritual growth is usually visible, and several things are evident in it. And number one, there's a desire to spend time with God and to learn more about God. And not just in public, external, where everybody can see it, but in my own private welfare, my own private life. If you struggle on your own to pray, meditate, and pray, I can encourage you that it's probably not as much about what you're trying to do as it is your understanding of who God is. And because maybe you've been casual, maybe you've just been absent, maybe you've just been living for your own self-interest for quite a while, and with that comes a lot of guilt and shame and disqualification. I know I should have been doing this all along, and I haven't been, so I'm really not worthy or... Probably not even welcome here. It's nothing further from the truth. You know, it's the prodigal son all day again, every day. And so just know that. Two, a desire to dig deeper into the truths of the Bible. You have this earning to want to know more. Three, learning and teaching others the truth about the Bible. So coming and joining the women's group that meets here the third Thursday of every month. Coming into the men's group that meets here on the first and third uh, Tuesdays of every month. We'll, be, we'll, we'll meet this coming Tuesday. And just come hang out. And we just learn, we laugh, we, we share, we learn from each other. We, we rotate the spirit of leadership so different people are leading it. Marty's been leading us for the last two weeks. We're going through the book, uh, we're going through the, the verse, John 3.16 right now. And it's awesome. But it's creating things like that. We have the, some uh, Zoom group called Elephants that started, that meets every Wednesday and every Saturday morning on Zoom. Join it. It's co-ed. It's awesome, and it's fun, and that's easy to do. You can see Deb, myself, a lot of people here that participate in that. Carolyn, and we would love for you to come and check it out. There's no pressure. You don't have to know anything. You just show up and be one among many. Growing in grace and forgiveness, that's huge for all of us, to be more graceful towards people, to be more tolerant towards people, and be more forgiving towards people, especially in our circles, and having a desire to obey God's word for our life. And principles. This new way of living, a Jesus-centered way of living, is a journey that lasts a lifetime. And so the encouragement, let's do it together. Let's do 2023 better than we have 
ever. So where do we go from here as we close out? Well, get into the Word of God. And if you haven't picked up the Bible in a while, start in the book of John. That's where I tell you to start. Start in the book of John. Great place to start. Become more intentional about taking steps in faith. Become engaged. Join a small group. Start a small group. We're going to do a study here coming up for Lent called 40 Days in Prayer. And we'll have workbooks and we'll do different things. And the messages will all be centered around how to up our game, our prayer game in 2024 or 2023. But participate in that. Join a small group study or find one. Just get six, eight people together, meet at your house, whatever, just for, for the duration of this study. And be engaged in it and see what comes out of that. Become more intentional about taking steps of faith in your life. If you haven't been baptized, if you haven't been through a discipleship program, if you haven't been really engaged in other than coming here on Sunday, then let's get you plugged in somewhere. Understand and experience living in the power of the Holy Spirit. Powerful way to live. Get together with a friend to pray. Read the Bible and talk about your spiritual growth. So maybe you have a lunch friend. Maybe you just get together once a week. Some of the girls get here on, on Wednesday mornings and they play cards together. And who knows all what goes on there. They tell me what stays at the card game stays at the card game. What's said there stays there. But they, they're here every Wednesday religiously. If you want to play cards, come hang out, come and join them. But whatever, figure out some way to be engaged in communion with people. And last one is mentor somebody else. Go shoulder to shoulder with somebody else and help them rediscover life. And it isn't like you've got to be some guru and you've got to know the Bible backwards and forwards. Just partner up with somebody and say, hey, let's do something together in 2023. Have lunch once a week, once a month. Do this, do that, whatever. Let your imagination float. But just do it. Become a Christian Nike, you know, where you just have that swish on your head that you're actually doing something. You know what I'm saying? You want to be engaged in something. So with that, friends, I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to invite our singers and Nick to come back up. We're going to pray, and then we're going to go right into our time of giving this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for new possibilities, regardless of where we're at in the stream of life, the season of life, the chapter of life, regardless of our age, regardless of our abilities, whether they're lessened or they're compromised, or we're just still young and vibrant and got the great, the best, we're at the prime of our life. Wherever we're at on our season, Lord, thank you for another year. Thank you for another year to uh, show up and put on your armor and to be committed to living a life you have for us and not by the lie the world presents that we need more of ourselves, more stuff, more money, more this, more that, more Bitcoin, more, 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 more of the world and really know that all we need is you. And if we just come all the way in, sit all the way down and really live into your way of life, the principles you've set forth and model for us through the person of Jesus. If we can just do that to the best of our abilities one day at a time. It's the only way to live. It's the best way to live regardless of what's going on in our life. What's going on in the world. But it's easy not to buy into that Lord. They struggle with it in Peter's time. And we struggle with it in the 21st century. So Lord we just pray for whatever's blocking us off. Whatever's in our channel. Whatever shortcomings, defects, sin that's there. That's just got us held back. Our pride, our fear. The list goes on and on. Just remove that, please, to a point that we can be willing to become the person you've asked us to be. Help us to make 2023 the best year yet. We know it's possible through the gift of your Holy Spirit that dwells inside each and every one of us. We know we need each other. Help us to be accountable to that and show up and be in the game. And so, Lord, we just pray it and we pray it boldly and we pray it in your son's name. Amen. Hi again, this is Harold. Thanks for listening to our weekly message and podcast. I hope that we have shared something helpful to you wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Just so you know a little bit more about us, we are Hill Tran United. Hill Tran United is an alliance between Hillsboro United Methodist Church and Transformation United Methodist Church. We are kingdom churches and kingdom communities for people who aren't into church. We meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. at Hillsboro United Methodist Church and 11 a.m. at Transformation United Methodist Church. Both churches are located in the northeastern tip of the beautiful Ozark Mountains, 
located in Jefferson County, Missouri. We also meet during the week in smaller groups that we call life groups and home churches, and that's how we make it relational. We hear regularly from people from all over who are engaging in personal and group studies based on our teaching, and we would love to know if that is happening where you are at. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube, or you can download our app from your favorite app store. to search for the app titled Our Church by Church Dev and enter in Hilltran United, and you can access all of our available audio, video teachings, plus through the app, you can, and, or our website, you can download our PowerPoint slides, bulletin, sermon notes, and discuss the questions. It's all there for you. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how you can support Hillsboro United Methodist Church or Transformation United Methodist Church financially, please go to www.hilltran.org for more information and to give. We appreciate anything you can do to help. Hey, thanks for being a member of this extended church family. I'm glad we are in this together as kingdom people commencing shoulder to shoulder to help people rediscover life and experience the kingdom of God.